This is the Dad Devotionals Podcast with Dave Domzowski. Each week, I'll bring you compelling interviews that'll educate, inspire, and motivate you to become the father and husband our Lord called you to be. We're a community of devoted dads who want to strengthen our faith and family and live out our true purpose in this life. Please, won't you join us? Just text me at 717-913-5671, and you'll be welcomed into my Devoted Dads community. And if you want to support the podcast, we invite you to purchase a product, a book, or a course in our affiliate shop on daddevotionals.com. You can also contribute monthly at patreon.com slash daddevotionals. Now, here's today's show. God bless. Guys, let's talk about self-care for just a second. We're not getting any younger. The stress of kids and work just wreak havoc. On our skin. That's why you need to check out Molina New York. With their non toxic organic products, Molina is the answer to men's self care. They have great organic olive oil, natural sunscreen, and organic lip balm, not to mention organic natural bug spray, perfect for summer. And we can't forget their best seller for both men and women, their natural deodorant. The founder even told me it passed the marathon test in the New York City heat. Can you believe that? They're a Christian family small business, and the owner, is a wife of a U.S. Marine. This Father's Day, support one of our own and ask for Melina New York. Go to daddevotionals.com slash Melina for 10% off your order with code DAD. That's M-A-L-I-N-A, daddevotionals.com slash Melina. Have you ever wanted to start your own podcast like Dad Devotionals? Well, you can, and it's easier than you think. If you haven't heard about Anchor by Spotify, let me give you a quick rundown. Basically, it's the easiest way to make a podcast with everything you need all in one place. Anchor's what I use to distribute dad devotionals. Here's how it works. Anchor lets you record and edit podcasts right from your phone or computer, so no matter what your setup is like, you can start creating today. Then you can distribute your podcast to the most popular listening platforms, including Spotify, with a single tap. Anchor is also the only place you can publish video podcasts to Spotify. With Anchor, creators can earn money in a variety of ways, including ads and podcast subscriptions. And best of all, Anchor is totally free. Want to check it out? Download the Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. Welcome to Dad Devotionals. I'm Dave Domzowski. My guest today is Adrian Shepard. Adrian is an Amazon best-selling author, time management expert, and speaker. He's been featured in Inc., CEO World Magazine, and the Huffington Post for his incredible work. And he's joining us today to give us some, give us dad, some time management tips and hacks. Adrian, welcome to Dad Devotionals. It's great to have you. Thanks for having me, David. No problem. So Adrian is joining us from Japan, correct? <laughs> That's so correct. it is at the time of this recording, you know, it was middle of the day here in the U.S. on the East Coast and it's middle of the night for yep. Adrian. So absolutely, we are going to try to, you know, do a time management uh, exercise here and try to keep Adrian moving. So, you know, he can get some much needed sleep, I'm sure. <laughs> Adrian, uh, tell us about yourself briefly. I know I gave a little bit of background, but if you could just touch on your professional and family life, that'd be great. Um, well, uh, I started out as an English teacher here in Japan. Uh, that's what a lot of foreigners do when they come here. Uh, there are not many choices unless you want to be a translator or maybe, uh, an artist, I guess. Um, so I just did the uh, basic, uh, route that everybody takes and, um, started off. Okay. Uh, I was doing, doing fine, making some money, putting some coin in the bank. But then one day I sat down and really, um, analyzed things and, looked into the future. I looked at the bills and the things uh, that I was going to add to my uh, growing family in the future. And I realized, whoa, it's not going to be as easy as uh, it seems right now. As a single guy, I'm enjoying life, having vacations, you know, traveling around. But if I you know, have a mortgage and a house and all these other things that you yeah. love to put inside it, um, you know, uh, it just adds up. And I thought, hmm, This isn't uh, the way it's got to be. I mean, I believe in hard work for sure, but I thought there's got to be a better way. And so I started looking around and um, it just so happened that uh, around that time, um, I went through a life changing experience in the form of a tsunami. uh, And um, that changed my outlook on life forever, of course, naturally. I mean, uh, when my bungalow was imploding in around me. Uh, you just kind of have a new perspective on life after that. And, <laughs> and uh, yeah, so um, 
I just worked hard to educate myself. Uh, I focused on personal development at first and all sorts of different things for a variety of reasons. And one book led to another. And uh, over time, I just um, ended up finding that the thing that most clients that I was dealing with um, were really struggling with one simple thing, and that was their ability to handle time. I mean, if they could manage their time better, pretty much, I don't know, 50% of their problems would go away because nearly every other problem they seem to have or the major problem they ever seem to have is just they didn't have enough time to put into the things that they, were, that they were struggling with, whether that was family issues or business issues or health issues. And just by freeing up more time, they would be able to you know, alleviate that. And that was, as you know, by concepts like the 80-20 rule, is that basically there's usually one thing in our life that's uh, causing major amounts of stress in our life, and it's usually about 50%. And if you can free up time to be able to work on that, uh, it's remarkable how quickly you can um, alleviate that stress. Yeah, no, absolutely. So, but time management in general, though, you know, you talk about alleviating stress and it being one of the number one things for your clients that that you've come across. Why is it such an issue to begin with? Have you ever really delved into the why behind it? Uh, every day, <laughs> every time I talk to a new client, uh, I, 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 that question runs across my mind. Um, I think it's that we don't really, or most of us have never really sat down to really think about how to use our time. It's just like in school, we're not taught to really listen. We just listen. Um, you know, we're taught how to read and write, but we're not taught how to listen. And uh, that's why some people, when they're told later that there's ways to be a better listener, it's almost like really and the same thing with time most people think just time is is what it is and i have to focus on you know work i have to focus on doing this and doing that but it's okay to do i'm i'm not against hard work in fact i'm all for it but i just want to make sure that people are putting their hard work into things that give them maximum uh, leverage right. and um by learning how to maximize your time uh, you're really maximizing you know, a lot of things in your life because it can be applied across the spectrum, or whether it's at, with your family, with your kids, um, you know, at work, uh, in relationships, everything like that. So it, it's just so powerful and you know, it's evergreen. I mean, no matter what job you're doing uh, in what part of the world you're doing it, uh, you know, time is that one constant that affects all of us. Absolutely. Well, what about you personally? Uh, it's from a time management pers- perspective. I mean, you're juggling time as a father, as a husband, as a business leader. And I imagine, you know, being in Japan, maybe you have some US based clients, European based clients, and then obviously some functions besides just being that consultant or that, uh, that business coach. Uh, so how do you juggle your time? And you know, because you'd be a you know, you'd be the guy to ask if you're not doing it effectively, what hope do I have, right? <laughs> Um, you know, I take it one day at a time, one step at a time. Sure. And really, I think what I like to tell people is you've really got to break things down. You know, you don't try, you don't want to try and take on everything in one go because you'll just, that'll just lead to despair. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, tackle one part of your life first and apply the principles to that. And then you take that, once that things, things start moving in the right direction, you t- move it over to another area in your life. And quite quickly, you know, you're able to free up more time than you'd realize. I mean, one thing I like to tell people is, I mean, I'm, I'm a people pleaser. You know, I want to say yes. When people ask for my help, I love it. You know, Adrian, can you help me? Sure. How can I be of service? I mean, that's one thing I just love to do. I've always loved to do it. Um, whether it's, you know, heading over to Costco to pick up something for somebody or giving them a ride or helping them out with some, uh, you know, a podcast? Issues. right. There you go. Right. Um, but the problem with that is as I learned uh, early on in my, uh, I guess, personal development, my own personal development, is that um, by saying yes to everything, you can't say yes to everything uh, because you run out of your most precious resource, which is time. Okay. Um, so what you've got to learn to do is actually say no. And you're going to say a no to a lot of things. And that's what Warren Buffett does. I can't remember the exact quote, but it's something like, you know, he says um, no to 99 uh, things out of 100 or something like that. Um, because you want to be able to give yourself leeway for the great. Uh, opportunities always exist every day of our lives, but we just have to be available to take action when they come up. Um, if we're just too busy because we said yes to, you know, every, um, was it, um, uh, everybody who gives you a text message or an email, um, you know, you're just going to find yourself swamped and oftentimes 
you know, I mean, sometimes, I mean, even I'm guilty of this, you know, you double book, uh, you, you say yes to one person on a certain date, and then later on, another person will approach you about the same time, and you just think, hey, that's, normally that would be a perfect time uh, to be available, but unfortunately, you, um, you know, you double book, and you have to you go back and change things, but the point I, I'm, I'm making is that um, we have to uh, understand that if we want to take advantage of these great things that are coming our way, uh, that you've got to have a little bit of time available for that, whatever that is. And you have to make the decisions yourself what those things are going to be. But you don't have to um, say no to everything. Uh, I'm just saying you have to start saying no to more things. Yeah. Uh, and that's a good place to start. No, that, make, that makes sense. I mean, I feel like we're, we're so distracted you know, anyway, I mean, our attention spans are what, just seconds these days. So, I mean, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. so, I mean, saying no, even just to, even saying no to not checking that text message uh, because, Hey, you know, I, I gotta, I'm, maybe I'm on a time block right here and I need to really focus because it's really going to save me time on the back end. So I, I think that um, I think a lot of dads and, and fathers can appreciate that. So well, I'd like to add, add one thing to that uh, that you said about um, you know when you get your text message, it, it's really hard uh, to get back into the flow when you're out of it. Um, you see, just one single text message will take you out of the flow, and to try to get back into it will take you about twelve minutes. Now that doesn't seem like a lot, maybe you might think, but think about how many text messages you get a day, mm -hmm. and then you can do the math. You know, right. that's a text message from your wife. That's a text message yeah. from your friend, from your company or whatever. I mean, you, I wake up and I've got, you know, 100 emails. So that's, you know, 100 notifications if I'm not careful. And if I keep my, my phone next to me and I'm, I, I take a look every time that pops up, right. I'm going to go insane. So you know, one of the things you can do is just to be more productive, just quite simply is say no to yeah, messages. Yeah. And just uh, to devote a special time of day where you're going to an, you know, answer uh, emails, do it like a batch session, and that will really help your productivity. I think that was like, I think Tim Ferriss, I think that was when I was first introduced to that. I think Tim Ferriss does that. But it, it got me thinking, though, too. I mean, it's not even just text messages. I mean, there's notifications for any kind of social media or, you know, I, I act. I stupidly downloaded something like Wish because I was looking for to try to get free weights or something, and now I'm getting 20 things. So I right. think a good tip is going into your settings, and if you want to hang on to the app, do it, but shut off that <laughs> the notification yeah. reminder. Absolutely. You yeah, I do that. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a good one, definitely. Yeah. Um, what about just from a dad perspective in general? How can fathers use their time more effectively and juggling everything? What is just one tip that we haven't touched on yet that you can offer some dads here? Um, before I, I give, give my tip, uh, I would say that there was this one in, in a book I read many years ago by Kim Kiyosaki. Uh, that's Robert Kiyosaki's wife. Uh, she made an interesting point in that book and it, it's shaped my uh, thinking ever uh, moving ever since. Um, basically it says that uh, if somebody said to you, um, can you work out for two hours a day? Uh, most people would just say flat out say no there's no way that's going to work you know I just don't have the time I can't handle it I've, I've got too much to juggle but if you reframe that question and what happens is you go and see a doctor and a doctor looks at you and says if you don't work out two hours a day you know you'll die mm. now can you find those two hours and the answer is everybody can right you see it's not a question of if you have the time it's a question of priorities mm. And when it comes to me and my family, uh, I think you've got to set your priorities. I understand that we have to um, prioritize work, of course, because that's how you're able to pay your mortgage and pay for your kid, kid's right. education and things like that. But what you got to understand is that um, in the end, I mean, it, your, your family is the, the most precious thing you have in your life and you've got to give them, um, you know, a priority, not all the time, but you've got to definitely give them, you know, kind of first dibs uh, on your time. Uh, because it's, especially for children, um, it's the one thing that they, they crave more than anything. They don't crave a new iPad. They don't crave a new uh, gadget. They, they crave you and your attention and your love. Uh, and I, I met so many uh, people who were very, very wealthy uh, when I was young, mm -hmm. uh, drove around in Acura, Acura NXSs and um, you know, Lexuses when they were like 18 years old, but they were depressed. 
uh, they were on drugs, uh, antidepressants, because they they didn't see their father, they didn't see their mother, who was like the head of the C, head of the you know, Fortune 500 company and things like that. And um, it, it really almost broke my heart because I couldn't really understand that. I mean, um, you know, my father was always there for me, and it was appreciated, and it really meant a lot to me. And um, I think we got to learn from our parents. We got to take the good things, and that's what I took from my parents. And I said, well, I'm always going to be there for my my son. And it's just about priorities. Um, now, you know, I say to my son sometimes that, hey, uh, daddy can't be here today. He can't watch you swim. He can't go to your competition or, or whatnot because I have a very important client flying in or I have to attend a special meeting uh, that, that will determine a lot of things for us as a family in the future. Yeah. Uh, it could be very good for us. And I, I make it clear that he understands that. And I, I did that ever since he was a very young child. And kids appreciate that they're being talked to and made understood of you know to, made to be understood of the situation um, but then you you know you make it up to them you say and don't make it up to them with gadgets you make it up to them say you know i'll give you time next week i'll take you to the park that you wanted to go to i'll i'll, I'll remember that trip to disneyland that i promised i'm gonna we'll book that in so you make it up to them in, in um you know in the future but uh you explain to them uh why it, it can't be done today um, I've always believed that kids are much smarter than we give them credit to, but um, we don't want to talk down to them and we don't want to say that they don't understand. We just try to make it you know, really simple and explain to them um, that it could be really good that uh, if I do this, but um, I really would, I do want to be there for you. I just can't do it today, but I will make it up to you in the future. No, that, that's beautiful. And I like the way you, you put it that, you know, speak to them, you know, just like another person. Um, I, I do want to ask you, how, how old are your kids? Are you, you just have the, the one son or... That's correct. My son is 12. Okay. 12. Okay. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, we, some of the, 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 the fathers on this kind of run the gamut. So I'm glad that it, we sure. shared the age. Um, we have a lot of, you know, fathers of like myself, I'm the father of a four and a two year old. Um, we have a lot that in that range. And then obviously some fathers of even up to college age kids. So I like to quantify <laughs> that when we get a chance to, you know, your when you were talking, you know, I, I, I can't remember what book it was, but I feel like it's an example that comes up a lot. You know, it's the the nurse, in effect, talking to the 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 gentleman or the woman who's about to who's about to pass. You know, their their life is you know um, towards the end, and they never they never regret the time they spent with their family. If if anything, it right. was never enough, and they right. focused on maybe a job or or. or you know, their career or just all these other different things, you know, focusing on we're putting more effort in terms of the client than, you know, giving their children time. So I appreciated what you were saying because it's, it's conveying to the child like, hey, look, you know, this is important, but obviously you're also important to me and we're going to make our time, but this is something that I can't work around. Um, and, and I think, you know, I, I appreciate that. It, even, even, my, even my kids at four and two get that. And, you know, I'll, we'll talk with my wife there too. And we'll just say, Hey, you know, you know, daddy's got to do this right now. This is, this is important, but daddy's going to be off from work, you know, around this time and we're going to get together and we're going to do this and that and kind of have a plan of what daddy's going to do. <laughs> so it's just, you know, just letting them know that they are the priority. It's just sometimes things have to be done and, you know, we can't, uh, we can't be there right then and there. So. And that's, that's a good lesson for kids too, as well, it to is. understand that, you know, kid, you know, daddy is not always going to be there for us, you know, right. that uh, sometimes we have to do things without daddy or without mommy. Right. And, and yeah. it's, it's not, it's not because they don't love you. Uh, it's just because it's, in fact, it's because they love you. Exactly. That doing it, right. And um, that's something, you know, just repeat it to them a thousand times, how much you, they mean to, how much you mean to them, how much they mean to you. Yeah. And um, yeah. And it's, it's remarkable. Kids have that, they, they, they really understand more uh, than we give them credit for. Um, we often think the kids don't really get it, but um, the one of the things that I say uh, to my son, he's, as I said, he's a little older than your kids, but yeah. um, I would shout at him. I would get angry at him. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty uh, tough when it comes to that. I don't, I don't believe in corporal punishment or anything like that, but I do believe in, uh, I got to um, nip, uh, nip things in the butt uh, quickly before they get out of hand. Absolutely. So I come down, you know, I lay down the law, I bring in a hammer, whatever, not real hammer, uh, just like, you know, yeah. uh, lay down the law. And, um, but as soon as I'm, I'm finished with my little rant and my little speech, then I'll actually, you know, calm down. Then I'll explain why. And I'll say, why, why, why was daddy angry? Why? Let me, let me just explain. I'll, 
you know, what happened in this situation if you did this and if you did that. And then the kids are like, whoa, okay, he's not just ranting and raving, but he's actually taking the time to explain it to me. Even though I don't really get everything he's saying, right. I do appreciate that he's taking the time. And again, you see, there we come back to that concept of time, right? You're giving them your time and they appreciate that. Yeah. You know, it's more valuable uh, than you realize. So, you know, my son, uh, I use time management tips uh, ever since he was a little child. <laughs> he's my little you know, experiment, I guess, in a way. Love it. Uh, but, um, you know, he's, he's got a black belt in karate. He's, he's got a brown belt in Aikido. And he's, um, he's got a bronze medal in the Junior Olympics for swimming. And you might think, well, how do you find the time? And that's, of course, learning two languages and uh, all that stuff. Wow. And it's just... You know, we, we set time for him, his playtime. So he does his switch. He does his YouTube, but th th it's not unlimited time. It's uh, one hour a day maximum or 30 minutes on this day because he can't, he can't squeeze it in on, on Saturday. He gets like a little extended time because his friends are free, but Sunday he gets almost nothing because it's family day. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but again, if, you know, we can, we can, we're, we're not, it's not, ev not everything set in stone. We just um, play it by year, but he understands the rules and he accepts it. But too often, I think a lot of parents, especially in today's world, it's been like this for a while now, his parents are like, oh, you know, just give kids their freedom and, you know, oh, it's okay. And they'll understand. No, they don't get it. They don't understand. Oh. And four hours of Switch is the same as one hour Nintendo Switch. It, it, for them, it's joy. Yeah. But it doesn't, four hours does not, ex, you know, their happiness does not increase more than an hour. Right. It really doesn't. And so parents don't really understand that rules are actually really beneficial in helping kids, first of all, understand how the world works. I mean, we have to live by rules mm -hmm. uh, or there's anarchy. Um, but also um, that uh, you have to dedicate time to certain things in your life, uh, education, um, health. You know, I, I believe in sports strongly uh, for, for their health. Um, you've got to dedicate it to time. Uh, sorry, sleep. Sorry. <laughs> I mean, you've got to take time to sleep. Yeah. Um, all these things and uh, yeah, playtime's okay, but we just can't go too far with it. That's all. No, no, that, that, that makes sense. I, and I appreciate you kind of taking us through that. You know, my, my children are involved in a lot of sports. One of them being karate. We don't, we don't pronounce it correctly over here, I'm sure. But, <laughs> but, you know, I, I, we're, we're really, we really think that's important just from a, just from a discipline standpoint and just, you know, a, a focus standpoint. And we've really seen a, a tremendous uh, switch in them over the, you know, the time that they've done it. My, my two-year-old daughter, I mean, she was running around, running circles around the, <laughs> around the mat there and everything and, and, and the, and the dojo. And, you know, here she is, even after coming off a, you know, a hiatus from, from COVID, she's able to focus, she's able to stay engaged. And it's, it's just amazing what, you know, the, the discipline and the mindset that it teaches. Um, so I, I, you know, just kind of building off what you said there. I do want to switch gears though. I, I want to talk about something really quick here that, that comes up a lot in the States at least, and it's multitasking. Is multitasking sure. a myth or are we just really that bad at it? Oh no, it, we, it's, it's, it's absolutely one of the worst things you can do. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, the thing is, uh, I believe it's, uh, I think it's Darren Hardy, mm. uh, put it this way that basically, uh, by multitasking, we are dropping our IQ by almost 10 points. Wow. And to put that in perspective, you think, well, okay, what does that really mean? I mean, is that, I mean, okay, I've got an IQ of 150. Who cares if it's 140? Right. right? You know, whatever. <laughs> but um, if you put in this perspective, if you like to smoke, uh, you know, that, that, that lovely weed, uh, marijuana, um, that drops your IQ by, I think it's uh, eight or six points. So there you go. So you actually, most people, if you're doing multitasking, are basically high. Uh, that's the best way to look at it. Wow. That's yeah. a, that's a title um, for a podcast episode. <laughs> right there. You know, are you, are you walking around high all day? Or how many people are walking around high in your office? Um, a lot, actually. That's the truth. Wow. Um, it, it's devastating. Um, and unfortunately, uh, a lot of times because of our workplace environment, things like that, we do end up having to multitask because we're not able to just – you know, cocoon ourselves into this little bubble and, and, and just focus on one thing. You know, we get phone calls, we get this, we get that. And it's really hard. Um, but uh, if we are able to uh, somehow create that uh, little bubble of uh, power, uh, then yeah, you know, 
really dedicate yourself to one single task at a time. I think uh, Darren Hardy goes on to explain that when Steve Jobs was building um, the iPod, as well as the mm -hmm. iPhone, as well as the iPad, that every time he dedicated just um, four and a half hours a day to that project. Uh, he didn't dedicate every waking hour. It was just four and, a half, four and a half hours a day, but it was done in three 90 minute sections during the day. So I would guess first thing, afternoon and then evening, sure. uh, but it would be 90 minutes every time. And he would create, you know, a little, his little fortress of power and just, you know, go all at it. And if you can just dedicate seriously uh, 90 minutes, three times a day to any one project, you'll get more done than most people get done in, you know, eight hours, 12 hours, you know, 16 hours uh, wow. work. Because there is also a thing that once you go past, um, I think, what is it, eight hours, uh, that you you get diminishing returns mm -hmm. on your productivity. Uh, so you've really got to be, be careful. But if you can create, if you can find ways to create four hours, four and a half hours, just broken up into three parts, and really focus, uh, minus your distractions, then you, you will, you know, your productivity will zoom. Wow. And very interesting. Thanks for sharing that. Um, you building off that though, what are some other resources that uh, you can share for dads to, to enhance their time management skills? Uh, resources. Well, you know, I'm a big believer in books um, because books are, you know, uh, they're little gems. They're what, 12 bucks used, four bucks used sometimes yeah. on Amazon. Right. And they're, you know, gold mines. However, I do understand that some of us are not the best readers. Now, I would suggest to some people that if you're not a good reader, you should become a better reader. Um, but you might, you might be saying, well, I don't have the time for that. Well, thank goodness we have this thing called audiobooks. Yes. Um, and that's a huge resource uh, that you can use because not only uh, can you just put it on your iPhone and just, or your smartphone and just wander around and when you're at the gym or you know, when you're in your car or whatever, just, you know, turn it on. And instead of listening to Beyonce, you know, rock in the house, you listen to, you know, Tony Robbins or Jim yeah. Rohn rock in the house. Nice. And at first you might think it's not as awesome. <laughs> you know, you don't get your jam on, but I, I guarantee you, uh, if you keep at it, you, you'll, you'll love it just as yeah. much. Um, that was a big eye opener for me. And the benefit of, of putting it on your iPhone as well is you can actually speed up, uh, you know, the absorption of it. So you can actually start with like 1.2 times. You won't even notice a difference. 1.5 is fast, but your ears will adjust to it. Uh, after that, I wouldn't really go any further, but I like 1.2. I think it, it doesn't take anything away from the, um, the, the audio and you'll be able to absorb the information just as easily without even struggling at all. Great. It's just an easy way to do things and absorb things. So, you know, look into that. There's another thing that you might also want to do is, okay, again, we might not have time to read, you know, a 500 page, you know, tomb like uh, Tony Robbins kind of stuff that he has, but you can down get um, uh, book summaries that are available. Uh, there's various sites that have book summaries. Um, Blinkist is them. one, right? I'm sorry. Blinkist, isn't that? Uh, the Blinkist, that, that's it. That's yeah. one. Uh, there's a few others as well. Um, take a look at them. But, um, and it, some of them even have audio versions. I think Blinkist is one of them. Uh, so again, now you're cutting, uh, instead of the audio book being four and a half hours long, you can do it in 15 minutes. Now, if you like the book, then you can go buy the book afterwards, but it's right. just like a good introduction. If you feel like it's, it's not really your cup of tea, or you didn't really feel that the summary is giving, offering you anything, then you just move on. Because one of the best things you can do is not read a book. Mm -hmm. In a sense that if it's going to be a waste of your time, and I believe me, I've, you know, over there, I don't know if you can see in the background, but I've got about 800 books on my bookshelf. Right. And I can I have to admit some of those books are, you know, not the best use of my time or were not the best use of my, <laughs> many of them were, but a few of them were <clears throat> you know, <clears throat> yeah. not uh, really worth it. So, gotcha. yeah, um, I, I think those, those are two great resources, whether you do it, um, you know, physically reading the book or, you know, digitally, whatever, or just, you know, audio absorbing things and not just audio books, but audio lectures by uh, many of the personal development experts or mm -hmm. uh, people in your field, whatever that field is, because what you want to do is you want to make yourself, you know, a better human, better businessman, a better doctor, a better lawyer, whatever that is, uh, by becoming better, you can, You'll, you'll get better promotions. You'll have more money coming in. Uh, you'll be able to get better choice, have make more choices and have more control over your life. And that's really what I think time management really does to us. It gives, it just gives us more control in our life. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, I found that everybody who applies these principles 
and and the more and the more um, that uh, just things start turning around uh, and moving in a more positive direction. Uh, you just you just want to enhance your life in every way you can, and uh, I think time management is a great place to start. But um, you know, through the books, you'll also be able to. Uh, pick up skills for your own businesses and uh, really you know, become a force in your industry. Yeah, absolutely. I do want to add too that, uh, you know, I, I, I'm still, in addition to this, I'm, I'm still, uh, you know, employed by my regular job and, you know, you might want to just look in to see if they, they are, they have any resources that a lot of people don't even know about. Maybe check with HR or check with who runs your, your training programs because, you know, and just doing some little research, I found like a wealth of information that, you know, we're part of different programs and, you know, we, they, you know, that you get stuff for free just through, you know, who, who you work with and who you work for. So a lot of times people don't even understand that. They don't even know that, that you're a part of that, that you get, whether it's a discount or whether it's just like free access to some kind of online resource. So, you know, inquire about that, check that out. If they have any kind of training programs at work or check with your human resource staff, um, you know, don't take advantage of that, especially right now. I mean, you know, you're, you're, you're at home. A, a lot of us, you're working from home, um, you know, on your lunch break, Hey, you know, start reading a book or listening to an audio book or, you know, listening to a lecture for, uh, for 20 minutes, not even the whole time, just a little bit, start investing, please. Now there's one thing, one thing I, I, I did say that I said multitasking is a myth. I, I, but you did say something there Yeah. and, you know, during your lunch hour, I mean, there's nothing, wrong with eating and listening that they don't detract from one another right so there are certain things that you can do at the same time in that sense i guess you could say that multitasking does work but it's not because you're using two different parts of your your brain i mean you're not right. using your you know you, your brain is free while you're eating while you're you yeah. know, driving your brain is again free so these are things that do work it's more it's called chunking not uh, chunking. multitasking but yeah. but if if then you know i don't want people to get mis uh, interpret what i meant by, yeah. by saying that it's not impossible to do two different tasks of course there are. i i like to exercise while i watch tv mm -hmm. I, it doesn't detract from my tv time but i get i get healthier as i do it exactly um, so yeah just to be clear just no no i i appreciate that and you know for me i mean i like to listen to audiobooks sometimes or or lectures while I'm working out. I mean, I actually, I think it helps me think better and process the information better. And I'll, I'll even stop it and just kind of ponder it for a second while in between sets or something. <laughs> mm, great. So, yeah, yeah. I, I take a ton of notes. Um, you know, I pause it and, you know, take some notes and then get back to what I'm doing. Yeah, yeah exactly. Exactly. All right, Adrian, I want, I want to, I really want to help you get to bed. So I got one more question for you. Where sure. can we learn more about what you have going on? Uh, well, you know, you can find me on Facebook. Uh, I think it's Adrian, Adrian Shepherd Japan. Mm -hmm. um, on LinkedIn, it's I Succeed Book. Um, you can find me at adrianshepherd.com and you can also check out I Succeed Book .com. Uh, mm -hmm. And of course, if you just type in my name, you'll find me on Inc. and Good Men Project, uh, Business Insider, and all my articles that I share. Um, or oh, there's a wealth of things available on my blog or other, other sites that, uh, you know, it's just it's free for you, you know, so I might as well take advantage of it. It's a good place to get started. Um, yeah. you know, don't, don't, you don't have to invest a ton of money to get started. You just have to just commit yourself to, to wanting to learn, to be better. And once, once things start rolling, I think you'll find that you want to invest, uh, more into it because you really want to get down to nitty gritty you want to really, you know, hire uh, coaches or um, people who can take you to the next level. But in the beginning, there's a lot of free material on, you know, YouTube and things yeah. like that. That will really help you. Uh, you've just got to say, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm willing to, to do it. That's it. Absolutely. Adrian, as always, I always appreciate talking to you. I always appreciate you, you know, coming on whatever I have going on and, and just sharing your wealth of knowledge. You really are uh, you're a, you're a national treasure in Japan, but you also help us out here in the U.S., which we appreciate. And I, I can't thank you enough. It's, it's my pleasure, David. Anytime you need anything, I'm, I'm always there. Thank you. We'll get some sleep. And everybody, make sure you take some notes when, uh, and listen to this one again and make sure that uh, you listen to everything that, that Adrian has, has, uh, has shared with us. All right? Thank you so much, and take care. Take care. Hey, dads. Are you responsible for your household or business finances? If so, check out my website, runthemoney.com. Run the Money is the place for money management tips for saving more, paying off debt, and budgeting. I also give you ideas and information for starting a side business. 
If you're in between jobs or need a way to get a better handle on your family's money, go to runthemoney.com for free articles on money management. That's runthemoney.com, R-U-N-T-H-E-M-O-N-E-Y, all one word, runthemoney.com. I'll see you there. Thank you for listening to Dad Devotionals. Be sure to text me at 717-913-5671 to join the Devoted Dads community. Do me a favor and share this episode with at least one other person who could benefit. Until next time, take care and God bless.